So we are talking about love is blind today and it's crazy. I'm actually traveling right now on vacation and I don't care. Like I I had to talk to you guys about what just happened. Um, So we need to unpack, unpack what happened with Hannah and Nick. So yeah, like the writing was on the wall and like literally she said, Hannah said, oh, I had a list of concerns, like ego versus confidence, like the Lulu, remember she wrote that in the beginning and all these things. And she goes, well, those things are still there. And that's exactly true, you guys. Like at the end of the day, and I always say this, the writing's always on the wall, always on the wall. Like you just have to be willing to open your freaking eyes and ask the questions and accept that, oh my gosh, this is who they are. It's not about the potential of, oh my gosh, they could be someone else or see, be all these things. And that's the thing that Hannah was always working towards with Nick. She was like, oh my gosh, he's a you know a boy, but I'm helping him become a man. I'm communicating, but like I'm teaching him how to love. And that's not her job. That's not her responsibility. And that is going to be a disappointment. At the end of the day, it will always be a disappointment when you're working towards someone to help them reach their potential. And the way that Hannah was going about it was really condescending. She's very much like, I'm at this level, you're not there. And it's like, if you're going to help someone, it's like, you don't do it with that kind of energy. But at the end of the day, she should never have even wasted her time because it was the writing was on the wall. It never changed. And then throw in that he doesn't go down on her. Ew. <laughs> like, what? Like, how this, this is like when you thought it couldn't get any worse. She's like, Hannah was telling one of the girls at the party how he doesn't go down. And not only that, like, he, you know, she's trying to teach him and explain to him, like, it takes work for a girl to get off. And he just keeps doing the same thing so he can get off, but she doesn't. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like that is insane. And she keeps trying to teach him and he's not getting it. So yeah, like how you do one thing is all, how you do all things. And like, he's half-assing, you know, the relationship. He doesn't know what it is to love. He's never been in love, he says before. And then like, he doesn't know how to like, you know, take care of her in the bedroom either. It's like, look, look, I I really truly feel like Nick is is just growing up. Like he had, he needs time to grow up. It's not Hannah's responsibility. And Hannah, finally, you guys, oh my God, it's like, I'm not going to go wedding shop, wedding dress shopping. What am I doing? Like, this isn't it. And they break up, like, finally. And the way that he, the way that he's like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> it just felt like so anticlimactic. What is that the word? Where she was just like, not, I don't know, she was kind of like over it. But I feel like she honestly deserves, like, I feel like she's done so much work on herself. She has a lot of emotional intelligence, but not so much either because she's actually really immature in some ways. And I don't think she realizes that, you know, I feel like the way that she was communicating wasn't healthy and it was condescending and it wasn't accepting, you know, him for who he is. It was like, let me try to change you. And that's like a stupid decision at the end of the day, you know, I was like, get, get like, it's never going to work, Hannah, right? Um, and then one last thing about Hannah, um, you know, Hannah's parents are so cute. And they're kind of like, why are you so angry, Hannah? Because <laughs> Hannah always did seem really pissed, you know, and like, now that you realize what's going on in the bedroom, like, no wonder, like, poor thing, like, she's like struggling. But beside that, she said to her mom, she's like, you know, we're not the same level, like emotionally, intellectually, creatively, financially. And like the mom was like, well, none of that matters. Like when you're in love, I'm like, well, like what? Like, listen, his parents, her parents are adorable, but I'm just like, of course it matters. Like absolutely matters. And I hope that you guys take this, like listen to this and like, oh my gosh, it does matter. And I think that this is the noise that we get from like the movies and all the bullshit rom-coms and blah, blah. And it's like, when you love somebody, it's just love. That's all you need. And it's not like, that's not enough, actually. Like, this is when you have to navigate your love life with so much intention. And from the beginning, you're like, oh, you know, you live at your parents. You don't have your shit together. Bye, bye. Like, that's it. Like, don't waste time. And, and thinking about, oh, well, they are planning to do these things. They are planning this and they're eventually going to do it. They're not. Like, it's either exactly how they are right this second. Take them like that. Do you accept them like that? Do you want a life like that? And like she, and, and it's interesting how Hannah like really goes down on him. Like, 
well, what are your responsibilities? And like your cat, what do you do for your cat? <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh my God, you guys, I felt like, like I feel for Hannah because I truly have done that. And I think you, you probably have too. think about it. Like when you've dated someone, you're like trying to help them like reach their potential. And you're like going, trying to teach them and guide them and challenge them. And at the end of the day, it's like a disappointment. Like seriously, I did that for years. I did that for years. And I bet you money the next guy that Hannah's in a date, it's the same shit going to happen. Because you do get stuck in a pattern of like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by losers or I, I, you know, or assholes or whatever. The guys that don't make me a priority, don't show up for me. And I feel like that's what Han Hannah's doing. Hannah is like, look at all the things that I do. What the fuck are you doing, Nick? <laughs> and Nick is like, what? I, he's clueless. He's clueless. You know, it's like, oh my gosh. But Hannah can't change him, right? And you guys, this is like the, the gold of love is blind. It's like when I was watching, like, oh my God, this was like me years ago. And, and this might be you now. Like cautionary tale, you guys, like wake up. Like if this is resonating with you, it's like the next guy or girl, whoever you're going to be with, it's like, oh my God, is it going to be like Nick? Oh my God, who's not going to go down on you? And who's not like, you know, walking the cat, walking the cat. I don't think you have to walk a cat. But you know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Oh, and I feel bad for Nick, but shit, man, that guy's not ready for marriage. I'm so glad that they decided not to do that. I'm really relieved. And now let's talk about who is talking about marriage. And I'm like, oh no, red flag pint. And, and let me tell you, Ramses and Marisa. And Marisa is so adorable to me. Like I love her. And like her mom is like, just such a crazy badass. And I, and I feel like she's softening up now to Ramses. But like, there are some things that come out of Ramses' mouth that I'm just like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. And tell me if you agree with me on that. Like, let me know if you're watching on YouTube or send me a DM on the Jackie Laura. Make sure you're following me and subscribe. But like, and, and oh, hello, weddings are coming out on Wednesday. And you know that I'm freaking watching that and we need to find out what the hell happens. But back to Marissa and Ramses, like seriously, you guys, Ramses is saying, oh, I think I could you know, I'm, we can do this. Like I could, I can do this. I can marry you because Marissa is having a bad time, like with her PMS and she's getting emotional. She's hormonal or whatever. And he is like, Oh my God, what is this? Like what's going to happen forever? His re response to her, the way that he's like trying to like be there for her is not like, I just feel he's so selfish. He's like always about himself. And like, she's having a hard time and he's putting pressure on her. Like, is it always going to be like this? And, and she's like concerned. She's like, well, when we're married, like things are going to happen in our lives, you know, after we have kids or whatever else, and something might happen to me and I'm hormonal, I'm sad or I'm upset, I'm having a bad week. And you're like, are you going to be there for me? Like, are you? And he's like, yeah, that's a valid question. Like he never answers it. No, you guys, he never literally answers it. I'm just like, and Marissa's like, oh, okay. Like she like walks away. And I'm like, oh my God, that was a great question. Where the fuck is the answer? <laughs> this is this is where I feel like, you know, we as amazing women drop the ball. Like we we have to ask the questions and we have to listen to what they say and then get the hell out. And like the way he's like, I can still, I can marry you. And do, like, I'm really wanting to stop and be like, okay, Marissa, do you want this? Do you want to marry this guy? Do you like want to feel like this? Where he kind of like only shows up for you, like on his terms. She's kind of like wanting him to do more. And he's, you know, I'm not, you know, I only have a certain amount of energy. And she's like, I'm finishing in law school. I'm doing these things and I'm planning the wedding. Like, I would love for you, you know, are you going to bring flowers to my mom? I thought about flowers. Like, she's so thoughtful. And he's like, you're going like a million miles per hour in your brain. And I'm like, I'm just kind of feeling they're not aligned. Like, you don't have to be the exact same person to be with someone. But the way that he, I just feel like he's not making her the priority. He's always like, Oh, this is inconvenient for me. <laughs> like you're PMSy. This is inconvenient. <laughs> this is annoying. Uh, is this gonna be forever? <laughs> like, 
I I just also get man child vibes from Ramses, and you know I don't I just not feeling him. I just really not at all. Like it's not like he's an awful person, but that's not enough. Like you see what I'm saying? I I'm not like this is the, the thing I keep seeing over and over. It's like oh my god, but he has all these things. Like he's nice, he's la la la, but he's not all the things. He's not. And it's like, why are we settling, Marissa? Why are we settling? You know, like for a guy to be like, oh, if you're going back to the military, it's, it's divorce time. If you do this, if you're getting too hormonal, it's divorce. If, you know, it's not like, oh, she's like, oh, uh, Marissa's like, I'd be, I, I fight for us for like five, seven years. And, you know, if, if we're miserable. And he's like, that's a long time. <laughs> and I honestly feel like Marissa like the way that she talks about like marriage and being unhappy, like possibly and having, I want everyone to know that, that, that that's not at all what it should be. And is like, it is, I've been married 17 years this December. And I swear to you, it's like the best friend, uh, amazing life traveling the world. Like right now I'm in freaking San Sebastian, Spain. Like we're having the best time of our lives. I'm like, that's how it should be. We have two kids they are the coolest kids ever traveling the world. Like it's never misery. When I have a hard time, like if I'm not feeling good, he's not like, Oh, what, what is this? He's like, how can I show up for you? It's, it's not that, and that doesn't just happen. He was like that when I first met him, that was his priority. And so like, this is where Marissa needs to like, wake up and, and say, okay, wait, what, what is important to you? What is, how is he showing up for her? And he's not, he's like half-assing it and he's going to half-ass it in the marriage. It's not like he's going to magically be a different person and show up for you when you guys are married. If you feel like you're the one that's having to show up and show up, that that is exactly how you will feel when you get married. So Marissa, I pray that you say no. I don't know what's going to happen, but I truly hope for your own sake, you say no to Ramses, okay? And his two braids that are driving me crazy. I just can't with that. <laughs> okay, we have to talk about a couple more people. Stop. Taylor and Garrett are so freaking cute. Yes, Garrett made a mistake, but I love that he owned it, okay? He got a message from his ex, and um, he said he liked the message, but then he ends up revealing more information that he actually wrote her back, and Taylor was like, I don't know if I can trust you or believe you. Like, what the fuck? Taylor was concerned, but they talked it out. And that's the thing, you guys, in the beginning, it can happen. Like you're trying to figure things out. You're trying to, you, you're realizing some people's insecurities. Taylor was cheated on before. She's had, you know, she has insecurities there, but Garrett reassured her. Like he wasn't like impatient. He wasn't like gaslighting her. He truly took ownership of it. That shows massive levels of maturity. I'm like, yay, you know, Garrett, I love him. And and freaking Taylor's awesome. Like, they're so sweet together. I will be shocked, and I may, like, truly stop watching Love is Blind if they don't get married because they're so freaking cute. Like, I don't see anything that they can't, like, even his mom, who's against, like, not fully on board with this, and she's upset that he's going to go to San Diego with her. Like, if I were his mom, like, seriously, just think about it. All you want is for your kids to be happy, right? And for Garrett to be this in love and this happy and say, I want to do life with this girl. And not only that, she's an amazing freaking woman. Like, come on. Like, his mom should be thinking, oh, my God, she's not like some dumb bitch. At da -da -da. Like, she's awesome. She's amazing. She's all these things. And she's, you know, his priority is her. Like, I want to make sure she's happy. And she wants to go to San Diego. Let's go. Like, he's truly prioritizing her and his mom I hope can get on board and be like super proud of the son that he that she raised and that you know he's such an amazing partner so I'm I, I'm hoping that like that it's not the only that, that could be a wrench in the plan of like happily ever after for them if the mom doesn't fully get on board it can mess with Garrett's head I hope that Garrett keeps like you know, doing what he's saying, like his actions aligning to his words, where he's like really prioritizing her and, you know, saying he's going to go to San Diego and da, da da So like, I truly hope all that happens for them. That's the only thing that could possibly go wrong. And like her family ends up coming, like meeting him in San Diego and everything went amazing. And then his and her mom came to, for the wedding dress shopping. And it was just so freaking precious and, and adorable. 
like you can feel like they're such good people and they have good intentions and are super supportive and all the things. So I'm really rooting for them. I would be shocked if they don't get married. I don't want to put that into the universe. That'd be crazy. Um, I'm looking at my notes because I'm like, wait a second. Um, who am I forgetting, you guys? Tyler and Ashley are back on track after the sperm babies thing. They're always so cute. Like they went skydiving. They're so cute. But like, I just feel like there's no issues and concerns with them. Like they really are pretty solid. I love how their faith is like number one to them. So I think they're so cute. But the one that, um, oh my God, who's the other person, you guys? I'm like, oh my God, I forgot. Stop. Tim. <laughs> like, you're like listening. You're like, Tim. Oh my God, Tim. Um, I can't with him. Like on the last episode, you know, uh, when I was talking about Love is Blind, I'm like, what he did with her dad was the sweetest thing ever, reading a letter, okay? Two days later, you guys, two days later, he ends up ending it, like with with freaking Alex. And it's honestly, I'm like blown away with how he spoke to her, his complaints. So like, let's back it up. Let me explain, okay? Alex met his family, his parents, right? I thought it went really well. She did awesome. But like, something's going on with Tim. Like, I'm, and I felt something like, what's going on with Tim? Like, why is he not fully in? And he told his mom, like, oh, she always likes affection and I don't. And I'm like, maybe he's not attracted to her. Like, maybe something's going on with, like, attraction. And maybe something's going on in the bedroom that we don't know about. Because, like, you guys, that is important. That is important. And if they're not, like, getting on the same page on that, then maybe that's, like, he's coming up with other stupid-ass reasons. Like, he's like, I sent you a text, and he didn't respond. And like, she was like, I was working. Like, I responded to your first message, and you, you sent another yeah, when, you know, you didn't do the dishes. And I'm like, oh my God, really, Tim? Like, you're really like, like, uh, what's that? <laughs> grasping at straws. Like, he's just really trying to find something, right? And, oh, you went to sleep. You took a nap. It's like, I took a nap for one hour, she said, you know. She's like, why don't you tell me this? I can't read your mind. And I always say that, you guys. You know, it, 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 you can't read people's minds, so it's super important to communicate your expectations. Tim wasn't communicating to her exactly what he wants from her what he expects he could have said hey can you do the dishes he's like i would have just done it like you you know you don't do it i would have just done it i'm like this is where tim is going way wrong okay and if he doesn't get like he doesn't learn from this he's gonna end up alone like seriously he just won't because he has to communicate and and he can't just be living in his head and also it's a way to guard yourself you know if people like don't communicate and because sometimes it's harder to be vulnerable like that for some, you know, and, and it's weird too, by, by the way, because Tim has been very vulnerable with her, but now it's like shifted where he's like not telling her what he wants from her in the day-to-day -day life. And he's like disappointed in her. And he's like, I'm not doing this. Like, I don't, I never want to see your face again. Like when he even said that, I was like, what the fuck, Tim? I felt for Alex, you know, I was just trying to eat her chicken or something. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what a way to spoil the dinner. Jesus. The way that he was talking to her, I felt like was not called for. It was just uncalled you know, for. It was just not, doesn't make any sense. What she did didn't warrant for his talking to her like that, you know? And it feels like it's like pent up things that just kind of boiled to the surface. So maybe it's like all these little things, but this is where Tim, I think, didn't handle it correctly you know and at the end of the day maybe tim is really scared after when alex lost her shit and like got physical with him you know at the end of the day people tell you who they are maybe he really knows that she's not the right person for him right now these little like reasons that he said sound so stupid <laughs> like he took a nap he didn't write back to me oh my god you know and like it's silly like those things don't make any sense um but Maybe there's more to it. Maybe there's, there's something going on in the bedroom too that sucks. But either way, they dodged the bullet. And now we don't even have to worry about who says yes or no because they're not going to say anything because they're not even going. And wait, and there's someone else. Oh my God, am I forgetting something, you guys? I think that's it because the other guys, hello. Yeah, Monica is, is done. She showed up for one little scene for a few seconds and said that she spoke to, oh my God, that guy, Steven. He's like, we talked for two hours, you guys. I called him. Yeah, he apologized. 
for what he did. And I, you know, I get it. And I, I was on like, I was dying. I was like, don't tell me that she's giving this guy another chance after he was texting and sexy or whatever the fuck. And like, no, 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 I'm not like, we're done. I'm not, you know, it's not like we're getting back together, but I, you know, I think he's a really good guy. I'm, it, it was so weird how that happened. And I feel like that must have, I don't know, something about it didn't feel genuine to me. Like, it felt like, was she paid off? Like, was she, did, did, did Steven, or, and I don't think that would be it, because that wouldn't make sense for Monica. But like, I feel like something happened, unless, unless like Monica was like really, such a good person that she doesn't want like the world to bash Steven and him like, you know what I mean? Who knows? But I feel like how she said it, I'm shocked. I'm like, Steven doesn't even deserve that. And I don't know, just something about it felt like not fully genuine. It felt like, and now we're gonna say this to throw him like one of those like life, uh, oh my God, I can't remember the word. You know when you're drowning and they, they throw that little, circle thing oh my god I don't remember the name <laughs> anyway it's like throwing him a lifeline or whatever the fuck it's called and and at the end of the day it's like I would have just let him drown like seriously why would we be nice to Steven Monica oh my god you're so good for him you're too good for him anyway but that, that actually speaks to her character like she's such a good person like I kind of love her more for that but I hate Steven more <laughs> even after that Oh my god, you guys, I want to hear what you guys think. The weddings are coming up. I'm going to tell you what ends up happening. Obviously, I'll, I'll record an episode right after. Um, I hope you appreciate this, you guys. I'm on vacation, and I was like, I had to talk to you guys. Um, let me know. Reach out to me on YouTube. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Of course you agree. Hello. <laughs> tell me what, and just tell me all your thoughts. Okay, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. And remember, it has to be crazy love or not. Till next time.